um, John Stark. Um, what I, I understand that you're in, you're denervating these posterior branches. What's your mental image of where those branches are going? Do they explain osseous pain? Do they explain anterior capsular pain where most of the osteophytes are? What what exactly is being being denervated? Shannon, I don't know if she's there. I think she's your microphone I is off. Thought she's there. So um, the nerves, the lateral branches that we dissected, innervate the posterior ligaments, specifically the short and long posterior sacroiliac ligaments, um, the intraosseous sacroiliac ligament, and the superficial lamina of the sacrotubers. So uh, wouldn't it make sense then that? If you're doing intraarticular injections, you're anesthetizing areas which aren't reached by the denervation procedure. Exactly, and um, that's why we're trying to advocate for periarticular injections to be used as a diagnostic test instead of intraarticular injections, which have been most commonly used to this point. Can I just ask a follow-up then? But if you're doing intraarticular injections, are you not suggesting that you're anesthetizing the anterior capsule, just like you're anesthetizing the posterior capsule with a periarticular injection? Um, yeah, so um, I, I'm actually an anatomist. I'm not a physician, but um, the studies that we included in this presentation, yes, they would be anesthetizing the anterior capsule and that should not be done because the radiofrequency ablation procedure actually targets the lateral branches which innervate the posterior ligaments. So that's the argument we're trying to make. Thank you. Other questions? What about complications with these procedures? Um, there have not been many complications reported. So then we can do this on everyone and just as a diagnostic? Um, I, I suppose so. <laughs> okay. I know that someone uses um, endoscopic procedures as, almost as a uh, diagnostic procedure before fusing the patient. Martin, you do that, don't you? Um, well, I, I, I use it in cases where patients are not able for um, partial weight bearing, if uh, we need a quick help, if I'm not very, if, I've, if I'm not safe with going over to uh, fusion or stabilization type of surgery. And um, in some patients it works really well. And I think the duration of the um, help is longer than what we see with the percutaneous techniques. So what we have seen in the uh, talk we heard just now uh, is that a lot of patients have um, pain coming back after six or eight months. And with a um, more invasive endoscopic technique, it's, I think it's lasting at least six months or 12 months. So it's longer endurance. That's my, I've, I've done maybe 20 or 25 patients. So it's not a long and not a, a big experience, but um, in some patients it helps me really well. And we listen to uh, Ibrahim here. He, he mm -hmm. talks about the durability of this technique and, and uh, well, he has a good two years or so, so maybe. Maybe, and uh, there's a suggestion in the in the chat that uh, they're making use RFA endoscopic procedures when the patients are old and osteoporotic, then might be wise as well. Okay, should we move on, Volker? Yes, yeah, sure. If there are no other questions, then we move on. <laughs> 